Another use for the chi-squared distribution is testing to see if two variables are dependent or independent of each other. So the question for today is how do we test if two variables are dependent or independent. And to do this, we will test for independence. What we'll do to test for independence is we will collect frequency data and organize in rows and columns. For example, we might uh, compare gender to We'll just do male, female, to whether or not you played sports in high school, yes or no. And this will generate a table where we'll enter in how many yeses, how many noes for each gender. We'll probably also have a column for totals and a row for totals. And then off this contingency table, we will see if playing sports is dependent or independent on gender. Once we have our frequency information, we also need to calculate the expected frequencies. And often, I'll make a second table to do this. of expected frequencies. And the way we calculate the expected frequency is we will take the row total times the column total divided by the total of the entire survey. And we'll have to do that for every single cell. So first row, first column, first row, second column, second column, second row, find all the entries for their expected frequencies. And then we can calculate the test statistic from here. Often, I'll organize this in a third table because our chi-squared is going to be equal to the observed value minus the expected value squared divided by the expected values, and then we take the sum of all of those. So we've got two equations that are going to be helpful to test for independence. Should know how to calculate the expected values, and then from that calculated the chi-squared. Now, as we're testing for independence, we need to know the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is equal to a product with independence. It's the product of the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. Also with independence, similar to when we did goodness of fit, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis are generally in words not in symbols. So the null hypothesis is generally going to be that the variables are independent. And then the alternate hypothesis is that they're not independent or that they are dependent. And then similar to the goodness of fit test, that dependence is always a right-tailed test. So let's try an example and see if we can test for independence.
an example. A restaurant wants to know if breakfast preference is dependent on gender. So the following data is collected. And they're going to compare male to female. And some are going to prefer French toast. Some will prefer pancakes. Some prefer waffles. And some prefer omelets. And then we'll have a total row and a total column. We find 47 males prefer French toast, 35 prefer pancakes, 28 prefer waffles, and 53 prefer omelets. If we add all of those together, we'll get a total of 163 males were surveyed. For the females, 65 prefer French toast, 59 prefer pancakes, 55 prefer waffles, 60 prefer omelets. We interviewed a total of 239 females. And if we total the individual breakfast choices, we've got 112 who prefer French toast, 94 who prefer pancakes, 83 who prefer waffles, and 113 who prefer omelets. There's a total of 402 individuals in this survey. The question is, if alpha equals 0.05, can the restaurant conclude that breakfast preference is dependent on gender. Well, let's set up our hypothesis test. First, we have our null hypothesis which states that breakfast preference is independent of gender. Breakfast presence preference does not change based on if you're male or female. The alternative hypothesis is that there is some type of dependence, that breakfast preference is dependent of gender or on gender. As usual with the chi-squared, we have a right-tailed test. And our degrees of freedom to help us calculate the actual uh, distribution is going to be the number of rows. We've got two rows. Don't count the total. One, two rows, minus one, times the column. Don't count the total again. One, two, three, four columns, minus one, which gives us one times three, or three degrees of freedom. Our distribution.
for our chi-squared statistic is a chi-squared with three degrees of freedom. Then let's see if we can calculate our test statistic. To calculate the test statistic, we first need to make another table of our expected values. So for our expected values, we'll do the same table, male and female. And for French toast, I'll give it a little more space here. The way we calculate the expected value for our males with French toast is we will take the row of males and the column of French toast, those totals. So the row of males had a total of 163. The column had a total of 112. That's how we get the French toast male cell for expected. 163 times 112. And then we'll divide by the total. So we have 163 times the 112 divided by the total number of people, which was 402. The expected value for French toast is 45.41. Now we'll go over to pancakes. Pancakes is in the second column, first row. So in this case, what we'll see is we want the pancakes for the males. That's in the first row, second column. So those are the numbers we're going to multiply, 163 times 94 and divide by the 402, the row times the column. So we have 163 times 94 divided by the total of 402, we end up with 38.11 is the expected value for pancakes. Next is waffles. With the waffles, we want the third column in the first row. So we're going to multiply 163 times 82 and divide by the total. So we have 163 times the 83. Is it 83? divided by the total of 402. And that's going to give us 33.65 for our expected value. Finally, we've got the omelets. Similarly with the omelets, the total for the omelet row for the males was 163. The total number of omelets was 113. And then we divide by the 402 to get 45.82. We'll do the same thing with the females. This time, the female row total was 239. So we're going to do 239 times the French toast total of 112 divided by the 402. The expected females who prefer French toast should be 66.59. With the pancakes, 239 times the column total of 94 divided by the total total of 402, 55.89. With the waffles, the row total of 239 times the column total of 83 divided by the total total of 402. The expected value is 
And finally, with the omelets, the row total is 239, the column total 113, divided by the total total of 402. The expected number of omelets for females is 67.18. So we've got this second table that demonstrates for us all of the expected values based on the row totals and the column totals. Next, I'll make another table that does the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. for our males, females. First with the French toast, our first cell, and I've got to do a lot of scrolling here. Hopefully, you can see it all on one screen. 47 is what we observed. 45, actually, I'll go ahead and highlight it to emphasize what I'm looking at here. Highlighting in yellow here, our first cell had an observed value of 47, an expected value of 45.41. So plugging that into our formula, the observed value of 47 minus the expected value of 45.41 squared divided by the expected value of 45.41, that equals 0 0.06. Then we'll do the pancake preference. You'll see pancakes. The observed value is 35. The expected value is 38.11. So we plug it into our formula. 35 minus 38.11 squared divided by the expected value of 38.11. That gives us 0.25. Waffles, same thing. We'll come up here. We observed 28 waffles. We expected 33.65. So we plug that into our formula. 28 minus 33.65 squared divided by the expected value of 33.65. We get 0.95. And we'll keep going with all of our remaining cells. For the omelets, we observed 53. We expected 45.82 squared divided by the expected 45.82. That equals 1.13. Doing the female row, the observed French toast was 65 minus the expected 66.59 squared divided by the expected 66.59 equals 0.04. With the pancakes, the observed value of 59 minus 55.89 squared divided by the 55.89, that equals 0.17. For the waffles. The observed value was 55 minus the expected value of 49.35 squared divided by 49.35 equals 0.65. And finally, the observed value for the omelets was 60 minus 67.18 squared divided by 67.18. That's going to give us 0.77. So we're going to get really good at that observed minus expected squared formula. And the reason we need to do that is our chi-squared test statistic 
is going to equal the sum of those observed minus expected squared divided by the expected. We're going to actually add all eight of these numbers that we just found together. And when we add all those numbers together, you should get 4.02. That is our test statistic. So it's a little cumbersome and tedious to calculate because you've got to go through cell by cell. First, we calculate the expected values by taking the row total times the column total divided by the total total. Then you need to find that observed minus expected squared divided by expected, plugging those values in, calculating them out. And then finally, we add them together to get our final chi-squared value. And now we're ready to go on with our hypothesis test. Everything should flow pretty quick from here. We need to calculate a p-value, or the probability the null hypothesis is true. To do that, we'll do the chi-squared on the calculator CDF, the minimum value of 4.02, all the way to a maximum value of infinity, 10 to the 99. And we said there are three degrees of freedom. So let's do that. We'll hit second. The distribution, or VARS button, will scroll down to select chi-squared CDF. The lower value we want is 4.02. The upper value is infinity, 3 degrees of freedom. Again, if you don't have the newer software, you just have to separate them by commas. And when we hit Enter, we find a probability of 0.2593. 0.2593. Which means there is a 25.93, actually, let's say based on our survey. Based on our survey, there is a 25.93% chance that breakfast preference is independent of gender. And we said we would believe the no hypothesis that they are actually independent as long as that probability does not go below alpha of 5%. 25% is well above that. And so we will make a decision to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the reason for that decision is the p-value is greater than alpha, or 0.2593. That's too much evidence overwhelming past the 0.05. We must still believe the null hypothesis is true. So we make a conclusion. Our conclusion is that there is not, always in context in the alternative hypothesis, there is not sufficient evidence to conclude breakfast preference is dependent on gender. And that is how we do a chi-squared test for independence. It takes a little bit of time to calculate the test statistic running through those calculations, but it's not too difficult. It just takes the time to run it out. So go ahead and take a look at trying a few of these. 
off the homework. We'll do a few of these more in class as we look at it a bit further. We'll see you then.